Hi. So um, I wanted to hopefully very briefly talk to you about trifles um, and talk to you about giving you some background, some context of this play so that you have a better understanding going in. Um, so just a couple of things. Um, I've taken a couple of notes, so I apologize if I'm looking over this way. Anyway, so this play trifles is a one act play. It's a very short play, and it was written by a woman by the name of Susan Glassville. And she was around between the late 1800s to the mid 1900s. And uh, she, as opposed to a lot of the women of this time period, was a very educated and very accomplished woman. And I'm not saying that as a slam against women. It was very unheard of at this time period for a woman to be as educated as she was. Um, she eventually had a PhD. She was an accomplished author. Um, she was a journalist. And in fact, that's where the inspiration for this play came from. So she was a journalist for a time and before she made the transition to fiction full time. And while she was a journalist, she covered a lot of court cases and crime scenes and things like that. And one in particular really caught her attention. She spent over a year on this case, really studying it and analyzing it and picking it apart. And it was about this, um, this farmer in the middle of Iowa in 1900, who was murdered, allegedly by his wife. Now, um, the the truth of this case was, I don't think, ever fully uh, uh, revealed. But uh, the wife was tried and eventually convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her husband. Now, whether or not this, this wife actually did or didn't do it, I don't know. But Susan Glaspell was so inspired by this case in particular and about all of the question marks behind this case and you know pieces of evidence that were ignored and uh, different things that were going on um, because the fact that this woman was a a woman uh, that Susan felt compelled to basically write a play uh, in in the vein of what was going on in this story. So here's a uh, a little bit of context for you. So um, like I said, uh, this was a time period in America. This was before uh, the women women gained the right to vote in the United States. Um, this was before a lot of uh, equality measures were put into place for women. So, for example, uh, women were not allowed to serve on juries at this time period. So, uh, this woman who was on trial was not given a jury of her peers. And these sorts of things didn't sit well with Susan, obviously, right? So. Um, also keep in mind certain things like um, there was very little in the way of legal protection for women in the cases of domestic violence and domestic abuse. Um, and women were expected in large part to basically just be housewives. Like that was your expectation, your role in life was to be a housewife, to cook, to clean, to take care of the home, to take care of the children, and to basically sit down and shut up. And that again, didn't sit well with someone like Susan Glassbell. So all of that to say, let's talk about the plot of this play real quick. And so this play, again, is loosely based on that court case that I was just mentioning. And in this play, you have two central characters, Mr. and Mrs. Wright, uh, which, by the way, the name of the, that couple is very uh, on the nose. So, um, Mr. Wright has been murdered by someone. Mrs. Wright is the prime suspect. Sound familiar? Just like that court case, right? So Mr. Wright's dead, Mrs. Wright is the suspect. Now, he's already gone out of the picture before the play even starts, and she has been taken into custody. So the two central characters of this play aren't even gonna get speaking lines. They're just referenced, which is really unique, especially for this time period. So, um, in the house, which this whole thing takes place, this whole thing takes place at the house of the crime scene, the, the Wright's house. 
And so you have the sheriff, you have the attorney, and you have the next door neighbor all come into the house to investigate the crime scene and they bring their wives. Now, the men basically are very patronizing and they tell the wives to stay downstairs, don't go upstairs, it's too gruesome for ladies, blah, blah, blah. So the ladies acquiesce and they stay downstairs and the men go upstairs to investigate the crime scene. Now, we don't follow, as the audience, we don't follow the men upstairs, so we don't really ever get to see what they see. The play centers around the women who stay downstairs. And while the men are investigating the body upstairs and the crime scene upstairs, the women concern themselves with investigating the house itself downstairs. And they find an awful lot of clues as to potential motive and potential, uh, you know, characterization of Mr. and Mrs. Wright that could go a long way to uh, creating a case for or against these parties. Um, that anyone in today's society would be remiss to avoid. So anyway, the women pick up on all of these little things and they discuss them. The men come back downstairs periodically to check on the women and they chide them. They're like, why are you wasting your time with these trifles? The name of the play. Uh, the real evidence is upstairs. And the women are like, okay, sure. Whatever you say, dear. And the men go back upstairs. The women continue to uh, concern themselves with these trifles. Now, the irony here is that these trifles are not actually so tri uh, trifle at all. What that means is a trifle is something that is unimportant, a little thing that is unimportant. These little things that are unimportant are actually not so unimportant. Um, and at the end of the play, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but at the end of the play, they find one very particular piece of evidence uh, that is very, uh, I, I hate to use the word um, condemning, maybe, in, in picking uh, an actual, like, definitive moral or, or reason or purpose or maybe even motive. So anyway, uh, again, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but hopefully that gives you some, some ideas. Um, some themes that are going to be going on in this play you have the role of gender differences you know how the men in the play treat the women as these like uh silly little things that really don't know what they're talking about and you know we're big and tough and you know we know what we're doing and you don't and they very patronizing um you also have the role of genders being revealed in here uh for this time period a uh, very stereotypical uh, behavior by these characters. Um, you have the idea of um, the role of a homemaker and what is the duty or what are the expected duties of a homemaker at this time period. That's another theme. And then last but not least, you have um, isolation and what isolation can do to somebody who is uh, a socialite. You know, what happens to somebody who's an extrovert who's suddenly forced to live the life of an introvert? Uh, and then last but not least, you also have the idea of what is truth, what what is true. And so these are different themes that you might want to consider as you read this play.